Hi there, everybody. This is Modulai Stack, continuing to bring you more excellent StarCraft II matches, this time on the right side as the yellow Terran pieces. We have the beastly Russian Terran, Brat OK. And over here on the bottom, as the red Zerg pieces, we have the monstrous uh, Ukrainian Zerg, yes, Ukrainian, Dimaga. Now, so this is going to be a very exciting Terran versus Zerg, I can already tell you, and that is because it is in close positions on Metalopolis. Metalopolis, always a great map, but these positions are so close, they just invite early and intense conflict. We see it's just a little bit of a run over here from one player's natural to his opponent's natural. So we're going to see fighting. We may see a very fast game because rush builds can be very popular in close positions, but certainly we are going to see... Intense micro, we are going to see mind games, we're going to see uh, big army styles. Now, of course, this is a little bit tough for Zerg, largely because Zerg does not know where to take a third base. On the other hand, Terran can perhaps set up a third base here with a planetary fortress and sort of dig in. And Zerg is very uncomfortable then because the entire Terran army is just next to his doorstep and it's very hard for him to counterattack. Um, on the other hand, he could think about taking this base. The Zerg could take this base right here and defend it with Mutalisks. Lots of possibilities. Oh, no. Scouting drone of the Maga taking out the SCV building the barracks um, before getting taken out himself and delaying that barracks timing a whole bunch and pulling two guys off of mining. So, um, actually, surprisingly huge damage done there by the scouting drone. Uh, you usually do not see that in high-level games, so a little bit of an attention slip there by Brad OK, possibly. Um, we do see hatchery first from Dimaga. Very common in this matchup. Zerg players are feeling very confident that they can deal with any sort of early, aggressive two barracks play. Um, Dimaga just not scared at all. Going to put down that hatchery, then put down the pool. He's not going to get fast zerglings. He's not going to get fast zergling speed. He's just going to get up that huge, powerful zerg economy. Interestingly enough, Brat OK. Oh, building a tech lab. Let's see what he uses that for. A reaper. Now, reapers are really underused right now, and I'm going to come back to talk about that in a second. But uh, I was going to say that Brat OK has chosen not to wall off at his ramp, and this is always a very interesting choice. Every player in the world knows that you should be very scared of lots of early Zerglings, and, and uh, you learn that in the Bronze League. But, uh, but Brad OK saying, you know, that doesn't concern me. I'm not scared of any Zerglings. You bring your Zerglings. And of course, we see this Reaper uh, might be a big part of that strategy. If you have a Reaper, you can, um, you can get out of the range of Zerglings and keep running away because uh, Reapers are faster than slow Zerglings. Now, Command Center going down at the same time. So that's really interesting build. One Reaper and then a Command Center. So he's going to rely on this Reaper for a bit of, excuse me, a bit of map control. Ability to take out Zerglings. So he is going to be able to expand safely. And in the meantime, he's going to be able to do some harassment. Maybe even hop up here into the main base to see what's going on. Maybe take out some drones. Maybe not. Might be a little risky, but we're going to see what he plans to do. Going to come around this way. Uh, don't see the logic of running all the way around this way if you're a reaper and you can just jump right up But he's done that anyway. He's just enjoying flying around with these jet pla jet yeah, jet packs Saying amusing things is not so great if you mispronounce them Dimaga is gonna chase him away with this queen and how is he following up this um, expansion he has uh, move this barracks over to build a reactor and he has made a factory here attached to this tech lab and he's going to get a quick hellion and what is he going to do with that tech lab i bet i know he's going to get the infernal pre-igniter to upgrade these hellions i might even expect to see after this finishes him put the factory uh, over here on the reactor to get a bunch more hellions out nice little transition here from brad okay uh if i were him i would be worrying about some kind of big roach push. I'm not sure what his plan is to deal with that kind of thing, uh, but this is certainly going to be very safe against lots of Zerglings, because those blue flame Hellions are going to absolutely barbecue any Zerglings. We do see the lair is starting. Zergling speed also getting to about halfway done. About the same as that infernal pre-igniter. Third gas going down for Dimaga. 
just making a bunch of drones. And um, let's see the units tab. He's got seven Zerglings out. Must have made eight early, which is kind of a lot to make early. And we see they're not doing too much at the moment. Uh, I would prefer to see a uh, Zergling outside of the front of Brad O'Kay's base so that he knows if Brad O'Kay is planning any sort of a cute little push. You never know when your opponent might just decide to push out with, you know, four Marines and three Hellions or something like that. Could be a big problem. Baneling Nest going down for Dimago when the lair is getting close to finishing. This is a smart move. A lot of Zergs omit this Baneling Nest and grow to regret it because mass marine plays can be very strong for Terran. This Baneling Nest does negate most of the threat of any of those early attacks. Third queen out for Dimaga. Uh, interesting choice, gonna help to spread this creep while not sacrificing any production at all. Up to four gas now, and probably gonna get this spire anytime. Uh, surprised he didn't choose to get the spire earlier, really letting his money build up at this point. Um, probably he's a bit distracted with this Hellion pressure. Um, these Hellions, oh no, I, oh, toasting a bunch of Zerglings. Um, Dimaga moving a bit too far in with his Zerglings. Uh, should have just held back a bit there. No need to rush after these powerful Hellions. Uh, he uh, has started a third hatchery over here. Uh, this is going to be easy to defend, or relatively easy to defend with Mutalisks, but it's going to get spotted right away by this Hellion. So, no secrets. Uh, Maga is not going to be able to keep this a secret uh, at all, so... I would expect some harass, harass, harassment, a little bit of harassment over here from the Terran player. Might even decide to drop. Uh, a lot he can do to make Zerg regret having expanded so far away. Of course, not many other options for that Zerg player. Brad OK has taken his third gas, gotten up three barracks, and he's probably getting, and there it is, the stim and the combat shield. So very standard upgrades to get for the Marines, also getting that plus one weapons attack. Uh, really good for Marines. It uh, does such a big increase to their damage per second. They do six damage, as you can see here, and that will take them up to seven damage. So an increase of whatever one divided by six times 100% is. So a bunch more Hellions uh, doing some damage to this hatchery, and it will take them a while to take out this hatchery, but meantime, not much the Zerg player can do. Those Mutalisks on the way, 11 of them. Surprisingly, not getting the plus one attack upgrade. Bit of a push here, but oh my. Uh, roasting a lot of Zerglings. Um, take out this Spinecrawler, might even take out this Hatchery. The thing is, those Nudalists are almost out. 